Okay, so in the last parts, we got movement kind of working. We can move between up, down, left, right animations. But uh, as far as changing the state out goes for our character, we're still kind of locked in the idle state. So we just need to add in some extra logic to our player controller script so that we can switch to the walk state and the use states. So let's go ahead and add that in. It's going to be in the player controller script. So first off, inside of the update function, I want to have logic for if we're going to switch between the idle state and the walk state. So above changing the clip out, let's check if the current velocity on the rigid body. So rb.velocity.magnitude, because we don't care about the direction, is above some kind of walk velocity threshold. And if that's the case, then we'll set the current state to walk. Otherwise, we're going to set the current state to idle. Okay, so let's generate this property up at the top. And we'll also give this property a field so that we can change the value in the inspector. So field, serialize field, and we'll give it a default value of something very small like 0.05f. So since our game is running at 100 pixels per unit on the grid, I believe that um, 0.05 would mean 5 pixels per second of time, something like that. So moving pretty slow in order to be able to be considered idling. Anything below this is idling and anything above it is walking. If we have no other interruption states like um, using the tool as an action. So with just that, we can go back out to Unity hit play, start walking around, and we can see that when we have velocity, we're actually using the walking state. Now, there might be cases where the character gets hit by an external force, so we're not actually pressing down on the keys to make the character walk, uh, but the velocity of the character would be greater than zero, since external forces would be acting on it. Uh, so we could add in another condition if we want, uh, which could be just checking if the axis input is not equal to zero. So if we do axis input, does not equal vector two dot zero, then we can walk. And uh, I think we actually want that to be an and condition. So we want to make sure that it's not zero and that the speed of the character is somewhere above the walk threshold. So in this case, we'll only be walking if the player actually presses keys to walk and the character is moving at some kind of speed above zero. So that can fix that potential future little hiccup. So right now it's working pretty good. And you can tweak the settings if you need to. So like in the inspector for player controller, you can change the walk velocity threshold if you want that to be a little bit lower or higher. But for right now, it's working good. Okay, so the more complicated bit is going to be um, the use action and any other kind of interrupt actions. So first off, if we're in a state which should not be able to switch back out to walk or idle automatically at any given time, uh, then we're going to want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So for all this, we want to check first off that the current state dot can exit while playing is set to true before we just randomly switch between walk and idle states. And then if it is a state that can't exit while playing, then we want to check if the state is finished. So we can do that by having a uh, float variable that will check the time till the end of the animation clip. So time to end animation is uh, should be less than or equal to zero. And only in those conditions can we switch between walk and idle animations. Okay, the other thing is that we're not going to be wanting to change the animation clip as well automatically if it's in one of those special states that locks the animation in place. So I'm going to extract all this out to a change clip function or a method. So I'm going to right click on it with it selected and do quick refractoring, extract methods, and let's call it change clip. And then this change clip bit, I'm going to pull right inside of here. So that on a random update, we can only change the animation if we're in one of these uh, states get, that can automatically change directions or change animations to different states. So that means we'll be calling change clip when we use the tool that is in our character's hands. So down here on use, we want to change the state to something new. And then when we change the state, we also want to change the animation. So because generally when we enter a new state, we also want to change the animation, we can set that into a property with a setter. And then that setter can change the animation for us rather than needing to call it down here in every uh, different action call. All we need to do is change the state and have that state change change the animation. So closer to the top, 
let's make a property for that public and this is going to be character state current state uh capital on the c so this is a property not a field but we're going to use the private field that we already set up down here for our get and set functions so git is going to return the current state the private field and then set is going to change the current state to the new value but i only want that to occur if we're not already in that state so if the current state is not equal to the new value then we're going to change the current state and if we change the current state then we also want to change the animation so we'll do change clip so we change the animation clip whenever we change the state and then inside of here we can uh set the value for our timer so we'll do time to end animation is going to be equal to the new clip time so we could actually get uh the animation clip that we set the uh, current clip to be inside of here and then after we change the clip entering the new state we want to get the uh, time to end the animation and we'll set that to the current clip dot length so the time of the new animation we just changed into and i'll add the underscore down there and let's make that a private float variable Okay, and uh, this will just default to 0f before we set it. So uh, to have this timer work, we just need to decrease the time to end animation on each update. So we'll do time to end animation minus equals time dot delta time. And uh, we could like clamp this to zero so that we can't have a negative number. That might make a little bit more sense. It's not necessary because we're already checking if it's less than or equal to zero. So just to make it uh, make a little more sense, let's uh, remove the minus equals. And then we'll set it equal to mathf.max, the higher of these two values of the time to end animation minus the delta time. So the updated time or zero. So the lowest it can be now is zero, which makes a little more sense because if the animation has already reached the end of its playing, then there should be zero time left, not necessarily negative time. Um, so that can just be a little timer function, and we reset it whenever we change states. And that means that if it's a can exit while playing, we don't need the timer to be done. But if the state can't exit until it's done playing, then we wait for the timer to be done before we can change back to a default state like walk or idle. And there are other ways you can do the same thing, but that's probably the most straightforward without like getting into coroutines and stuff like that. So now all we need to do, I believe, is to actually change the state when on use occurs. So we're going to change the current state here. And I'm accessing the property to make sure the setter function gets called to the new state, which is the use state. And any other time I use current state, I also want to make sure I'm using the property, not the field. Otherwise, the setter function with change clip and time to and animation doesn't get called. So whatever we have current state, we just need to change that to the property name, current state, capital on the C, no underscore. And that way, changing the state is going to make sure that we um, actually have all that code run as well. Okay, and then uh, back up here, the last thing I want to do is make sure that we can only set the state from within our player controller, since it's the brain controlling everything. So I'm going to make it a private set function, and that should basically be good. So hopefully this works. Let's go out to gather a top down, hit F, and okay, we have a null reference. So let's check this right here. Change clip did not set the current clip. So let's take a look at change clip. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so yeah, we do have the expected clip being set here, but we're not necessarily changing uh, what the current clip is set as a value. So we could either return the animation clip from here and not even have a current clip variable, or we can set the current clip variable. So if we are changing it right here, then I guess we can set current clip equals to expected clip. Otherwise, uh, the current clip is already set, so uh, we don't need to change it. Okay, let's go back out, hit play. Okay, and now that's working. So we can still walk up, down, left, right. Let's try left mouse button click to see if we can get the swing animation to occur. It does. And you can see that after the timer is up, we've returned to our default states of idling. Um, okay, so here's one little thing, which is that uh, while our character is um, using the tool, it can still move. So 
you know, some games you might have that kind of thing. But in this case, I want the character to stop completely when we use the tool. So we need a logic check inside of here to make sure it's in a state which can move. So uh, let's see. In fixed update, we'll just look at the current state. So if current state dot can move, it's a property we set up for every state, then we're going to allow it to move. Otherwise, we can't. So as long as we mark a state as not being able to move, then it won't be able to move while we're in that state. So if I hit play now, and then we use the left mouse button click to go into the use animation, you can see the character stops moving. Uh, there might still be a little bit of movement there because the linear drag isn't strong enough to set to stop the character completely. So if you want the character to stop almost completely as soon as we change into the state, you could uh, increase the linear drag on the character just so that it slides around less. So in here, rigid body 2D, linear drag, you can set that there. Now, if you want to be able to uh, use the tools with another key rather than just having to left mouse button press on keyboard and mouse, then we can go into the controls for player input actions and then click on input action asset. Double click into there, find the use action, and we can just add a new binding here. So I'm going to add a binding and in the path, I'm going to change that to uh, listen for a key that we want to use. And I'll just press F here to find the F keyboard key, assign that, and then we'll put this in control scheme, keyboard and mouse. And now while you're using keyboard and mouse, you can use the use action by pressing F on the keyboard as well as left mouse button down. And if you wanted, you could actually remove the left mouse button as an option for triggering that use action. But let's go into play mode after saving this, of course. Hit F and then um, hit play, press the F key, and we can see that that's working. Now also note here, uh, because we put in the check that we can't um, enter a state that we're already in, that if I press F a bunch of times, it won't actually enter the use state until the use state is already done and we're back in idle or walk. Uh, simply because we have that restriction. So only entering a state that we're not already in, so we don't reset the timer, we don't change the animation clip. So that's pretty much it uh, on getting the basic state machine of our controller to work. We'll have to, of course, set up the tools, add it to the character's hand, give it some box gliders, and allow it to actually interact with the game world, which we haven't set up yet. So we're probably going to be working on the tile set very soon.